carrying on with my first strategic card play. And here are my moves. Units moved sideways, have moved. Here's a zoom feature. And there you go. Let me find my pointer. Oh, my my. All right, well, what we're doing basically is just reinforcing whatever the hell is going on up here. You can see that they're moving in. Although I don't know what uh, Erasmus, Erasmus rather, is gonna do. Uh, he might not even push forces on up here because I think his main uh, concentration is gonna be the Philippines and or, uh, what is that down there? Oh, Singapore, but we shall see. But just in case, for my future offensives, I'm coming out here. Now, I was able to get, I was able to use the uh, rail transit route when I left on this hex right here. But you can see up here, this is not built up. So this unit, this 9-9 nine, nine unit, he can't move that far. He's only got three movement points, so he's only going here. The other units are able to come down here and reinforce pretty good. So this is going to be another tough nut to crack. So we're definitely building up the key spots that the Japanese player is looking to gain. He's got to have major offensives to get these spots. Likewise, we got Manila maxed out on ground units, headquarters unit. And got a couple uh, ships there now. Erasmus's main goal with his, uh, oh, what was that called? Axis. Aggressive air superiority was his opening axis of determination. And uh, aggressive air superiority is exactly what they did in the uh, last battle over the Philippines. If, if, his, if the goal was that superiority, they got it. There's no more allied air units there. He wiped out all my air units along there. So that really messes with the allies' ability to project zones of influence, too. So. Um, Erasmus was right on what they wanted to do. Now, whether that was out of luck or design, but there you go. Now, that is it for my card play. We will put this card over here in the discard pile for the allies, and uh, there won't be no combat. So, we're going to move all these units. Uh, see if I can get the point. The object of the game is for me to point the camera at what I'm doing, <laughs> and I know a lot of times. I don't, so let me bear with me here. Very amateur operation, okay. So everybody that's been moved, you wanna move straight now. Nobody moved here, here you go. Yeah, we got these two units here. We just straighten up and put according to strength. So we got a little three unit there. Six unit next. A nice big 12 strength infantry on top. Next, likewise, these boys here have been moved. That was the only unit. We moved him into the hex. That way, if the battle comes up, we got a couple of air units there that'll be actually in the battle hex that can participate. So, we've got Rangoon pretty well uh, stocked up too. And last but not least, we got my other unit up here that has moved, finished his movement. And things be slow up here. There are things we can do to, uh, Fix these roads. Look to use a three op card, and if the time comes right, we will. But right now, we got other uses for our cards. All right, we should be all straight down, set to go. We will, uh, could have moved the Chinese units too. All that's you know options that come, but right now that's all we could have done with our card. We just used our turn to beef up uh, units, like I said. Uh, uh, right now. I am short on units. There's not much to pick from. But like I said, it's still early in the game. and We do have reinforcements coming. But they were delayed. And luckily, none of them sent over to Europe. All right, that is it. We're going to go to the Erasmus bot to its card selection process to find out what card they want to pick. And, uh, oh, we might have to use their turn to put a card in the uh, future offensive Oh, what's it called? FO what? Ah, let me see here. Future Offensive's Q. 
That might be what we have to do. We'll look and see on the card selection. But it's time to go back to Erasmus. And uh, so far, I enjoy what he's doing. I mean, I can get a little bit of ifs and theirs, if he's and theirs, you know, about interpretations of rules. But if you look at it, you'll get it right. And uh, it ain't that bad. I'm curious to see what his next card played. There's be, there were things I would have done different than Erasmus for some reason. I would have took advantage of those units one after Hawaii. I don't know if it's, if they're, if it's able, if they're within range of the headquarters. But, yeah, <laughs> he's got his own fleet there. Hawaii's sitting there with nothing going on. You better hurry up and get there before they get their reinforcements. Uh, just me. But anyway, again, block markers. If anybody's looking at this one or what all these blocks are doing here. Grays are resources. Grays are all the resources are. Japanese don't have any resources, and that'll affect their uh, replacements. Uh, green Commonwealth, we get an extra replacement point if we have, if the Allied player can have control any one of those green markers. And last but not least, brown are the National Surrender Hexes. Those brown ones are the hexes that have to be occupied by the Japanese player to get those uh, countries to surrender. So those are basically uh, key hexes. All right, we'll be back. All right, then, swings back to the... Uh, Oh, Japanese player. And uh, it says here, first thing, start, number one. Arrange cards from left to right in this order. Military events, random events, all these events, but the only thing is, all we got are military events. So, no green, nothing else, no, re no re resource events. I don't know what that says about my uh, shuffling, but... Now the cards are really numbers close to each other, so I think that's a good shuffle job, just a luck. So they're all military events on my draw. But it does have uh, certain events that you want to use in order. For the last two cards, pick the best events in this order. And again, I don't have any of them. So <laughs> for anything else, choose randomly. We chose randomly these two cards. Operation Sergi. So I guess they said left to right. There's nobody else to put left to right, so we got these two piles separated. As the last two cards, I don't know if I'm supposed to put them in like this. We'll keep them this way though for right now. Now we'll go on down here to A. We'll start to have any cards have any cards been played this offensive phase? Oh yes, yes, we played cards already. We got one. Well, it's over there. It's been discarded, so the answer is definitely yes. So we're down to B. Does the hand currently hold more than two cards? And then it's a yes. So we go down here to C. Is the very first card to be played this game? No. <laughs> e. Is there an unrestricted military event available to play? Let me see here. Be right back. Okay, then we're on E. Is there an unrestricted military event card available and that is yes I'm restricted event event card strategy unrestricted event event card strategy so we'll go over here oh unrestricted event EC strategy unrestricted military event EC strategy oh okay that'll work let me look and see what else this means. Pick the card with the highest logistics value. That would definitely be this one. I already got this all straightened out. <laughs> so let's see here. Um, I guess these will be the last two cards in the deck. So we'll put them up like, well, if we wanted to do our deck. Let me get this deck straightened out real quick. Be right back. All right, so it says, criteria, pick a card with the highest logistics value. That would be this card, but... If there are offensive bonuses, pick in the following order. Ooh. This one gives bonuses. The French frigate shows is not an allied GOI or the three hex of a U.S. carrier unit to allies add four to any intelligence die roll. That's not good for us. This one is, though, Japanese CA naval unit to add two to their attack value. So I think we're going to pick this card. All right. If they have a paratrooper bonus, no. Non paratrooper bonus, yes. They go down to no bonus. So we'll pick this card here. I think that's going to be the card that Erasmus is going to play. Let's, uh, there you go. We picked our card. Let me read the rest of these little sub rules. If not, 
Erasmus will be activating one of these headquarters, seven units, seven uh, plus logistics value, so it'll probably be eight or nine. And Japanese cruisers, naval units, add two to their attack strengths for the duration of this offensive. We'll be back. Until we nailed the card down here to event VADM Condo. Conquest of the Dutch East Indies. Unfortunately for us, so Erasmus wants us to go for Manila. All right. As per the uh, axis of determination, we did this earlier in this turn. And this is per turn. So we still have a bunch of card plays in this turn to keep this going. But neutralize allied HQs in the first priority is the Philippines. So we will go for that. Right now with this card. Press pause for a cough break. We'll be right back. All right, then. Let's start on off. And, of course, we got this deal about create a force for each target determined by the axis of determination, which we got, have, uh, again, three targets. You know, in my interpreting it as saying, in this turn, there's going to be three battle hexes? Is that what it means? Because I don't know with the... Uh, the amount of forces I got, I can even take one battle hex, much less three. So I don't know if I'll be doing it like this. Like I said, we're still we're going out to the Philippines. We're going to interpret it that way. Or I'm directing Erasmus that way. All right, so we'll start off with one, with A. And the question with A is, is this an air naval attack on a target? No, it is not because we have to take the uh, headquarters. And that can only be done with... Uh, ground units so the answer to that would be no b is the car is the target a coastal or island hex yes c oh can you capture the target with an overland advance no d is the target unoccupied no it takes us to h can enemy air our carrier units react to this target and the answer now is going to be no I don't think they can. What is that again? H. Enemy air or carrier units. Oh. No, there are no air. They wipe, we wiped out the air units, so there won't be an air reaction. Yeah, I mean, the closest air unit's here. He's out of range, so. Closest air unit will be here. I mean, no, he can't. I don't think he can get there, so. I think the answer to H is can enemy air or carry units react to this target? The answer is no, and it goes straight over here with the invasion with naval support. That'll work. Oh, activate units for the target. Three and four, what's that mean down here? Strategy for composition type, I don't know units. Damage level and all that good stuff, so invasion. Oh with naval support. Invasion with naval support. Here you go. Force is gonna be naval, ground, unit, amphibious assault, and carriers. We like seeing this. Now what do we do here? Activate units and what's I mean? Activate fulfill this battle criteria. Oh, activate units, attack, weakest stack. What happens there? Invasion with, I guess everything goes up to here. Activate units for target. All right, we'll be right back. And again, a key thing here is with this uh, going over here to activate units for the target. Three is the key. Sub implementation, implementation notes. Following the selected strategies, force composition type activate the minimum number of units within range of the target they can achieve a damage level criteria and here you go so what we got to do is add up his uh i guess defense factors and find out how many hits we ha have to achieve uh if we're only rolling with 25 percent of our allowable damage so with with the worst roll we can get, 
what number do we need to achieve that? And this is going to be a high number. <laughs> might be unachievable, and he might tell us to go somewhere else. We'll be back. All right, so we are going to need with this task force 184 factors, attack factors. Because right here, if we roll for the combat effectiveness at our worst, if we roll 0, 1, or 2, you have to figure the worst case scenario. You only get a quarter of your points. So we need 46 factors to eliminate them. So that quarter of that is a quarter is 184. So 46 is a quarter of 184. So we need 184 factors, attack factors. To, to, if we rolled, it means if we rolled a one or two, and we only got a quarter of our factors to destroy them. Yeah, so we need 184, so that'll take us back over to here. And what is that? Uh, a. Ooh, I executed. What's some more I? Are there enough activations to support to fulfill? Uh, I gotta, I gotta get us started again. I forgot where we were. Be right back. All right, back to I then. We got our, we activate units for the target. Huh. All right, activate units for the target. We haven't activated anybody yet. Ooh, fine. For a damage level. Failing that, yeah. We won't be able to reach that damage level, I don't think. Failing that, activate as many as possible if reaction count yeah it's, yeah if reaction is possible which it could be we'll have to find out what kind of uh, there might not be much reaction because those are all uh ground units it probably can't react so there might not be no reaction possible there you go so we can figure that in and there won't be none all right so now we'll go over here to i is there enough activations of, to fulfill the battle support criteria of a naval invasion is that what we got going on here invasion of naval support Naval invasion and ground attacks. It's got to be a ground attack. Uh, invasion with naval support. Oof, let me find out which one it is. Be right back. All right. It, we, we could do all this. We could have an air unit if it was a ground attack. We can have at least one naval unit if it's this. It's not an air naval invasion. I think it's a naval invasion. It does say... Invasion with naval support. They don't have that in here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Thanks, guys. But I think we'll meet it. So, I would be under enough. Uh, yes. So, we'll go down here to J. Has the damage level for the target been achieved? Probably not. So, we'll go here to roll one die. And we'll roll a D10 for the Japanese player. I guess we should first see if I can come up with how many do I need? Whew, that was a big number. What do we do with that sheet? Oh, of course it's stuck on the back of this thing. Uh, come on, one-handed operation. What did I need? 184. Let me see if I can get that together with uh, the activations we got. That's seven. We got to find out which headquarters we want to activate. Be right back. All right, yeah, the most I can get there is 79 units. And that's uh, activating the South Seas uh, headquarters. Gives me two extras instead of this one, only giving me one. And it puts me in a range of all these boys. I can move on over there. So the only amount I can get is uh, 79, well short of the 184 needed. So therefore, oh. Did we go? Hold on a second. All right, then. I is yes. Down to J. Are there enough activations to fulfill the battle support criteria? Yes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. J has a damage level for the target been achieved? No. So we go over here to one to roll one D10. We roll the D10. It was three. Three is down here. Move activated target. Move activated units to the target. Okay, that'll be that'll work. Then we'll go down here to K and L. 
What's K? Can the enemy naval or ground units react? That'll be a no. L. Is this an event card offensive? Yes. So they all got to be no. Which goes us over here to M. Is this the last objective? No. Create a new force for the, for the next for the next target. So we're skipping that one. All right. We got to get things straightened out. Next target will be on the target list, Singapore. So the beefing up of uh, <laughs> old. And here's the units are all there. We got a couple ships, some infantry, and it, it would have been a tough nut to crack. So old Erasmus, but it's come through. Definitely, they're moving away from this target. Ah. And then there's our headquarters here. But, uh, oops. <laughs> that's what I get. Be back. All right, so Erasmus wanting us to pick another target. Manila slash Corregidor. Two built up. As you can see there. So we will move our target over here to Singapore. Now we got to do the same thing here. Uh, following the selected strategies, force composition type, activate the number of units within range. So let me see here. Oh, task force composition type. All right, we'll be right back. The attack on up. Oh, sorry about my bad camera work. Oh, where are we? Where are we? Up. Oh, I can't even find it. Singapore. There you go. Be back. All right, for the neutralized allied HQs. Singapore, we only need half uh, of our, what our attack factors are, so it kind of helps us out. <laughs> so we've got number there, and here's the number for Singapore is 21. So, oh, don't want to damage, don't want to damage this. All right, uh, at a quarter, it'd be 84. Half of 21, we have to get that out, it'd be uh, 11 or 10. And a half, 10.5. So that's a lot better. That's a lot easier to do. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. All right, so we might be able to take that target. We will start here with A. Is this an air naval attack on target? No, we will need ground units. B. Is this target in the coastal? Yeah, hex, yes. Go to C. Can you capture a target with an overland advance? No. Well, you know what? Oh, Singapore, let me get my tool here. Which hex is actually in Singapore? Oh, hey, we could. I never thought about that. Well, there you go. Something new every day. So, the answer to this one. Oh, can, uh, can you capture a target with an over and land advance? Yes. D or E. Or EF. Okay, thanks a lot for just totally messing us up. Is the target occupied? Yes. ERF. Does the target contain only enemy eight naval units? No. F. Is it possible ground unit to march into the and to and out of the target as possible for a ground unit. Oh, that's a good idea. We have three movement points. We could use that rail movement. There is a one half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. Yes, I guess we could. Oh, we'll be back. All right, we're down here to the ground attack with air and naval support. We will go back up here. Activate units for this target. Three. Again. Following this strategy's force composition. Uh, ground attack. With naval units. With naval air support. Ground. We need ground, naval, air, and carrier. So yeah, I think we could do all that. Or can we? Oh, we might not be able to. Oh, do we have carriers here? That's right, we don't have no carriers. Ouch. Well, no, I'd have to have to activate this one. 
and he's well without a range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, hold on a second. We can't do it with with that. We'll be right back. Okay, under question I, is there enough activations to fulfill the battle support criteria? Uh, battle support criteria for this was a uh, ground attack with naval support. Ground, naval, air, and carriers. At least one air are. At least one air or ground naval unit. So we should be doing that. That'll be a yes on I. Well, let me look this over again real quick. All right, then the answer to I is yes. Are there enough activations to fill the battle support criteria? This is an invasion. At least one air or naval unit, which we can supply. That takes us down to J, which is has the damage level of the target been achieved. I believe it has. Uh, at the most 84, that's a 25 percent. It says for this target, it's only 50 oh percent. So we'll say yes on this one, and we'll move it, move activated units to their target. And then it's K. Oh, I gotta activate, huh? All right, let me see what's going on here. I gotta activate a bunch of units. We'll be right back. All right, I believe we have our assault on Singapore organized and ready to go. Remember and keep it in mind that with this event card, uh, cruisers get two added two to their attack strengths for the duration of this uh, offensive. Our headquarters unit being activated is here within its range. I think it's 13 hexes is this unit here. So all the red die are indicating units that are activated. Our uh, event card gives us seven activations, logistic value of seven. And our headquarters gives us a added one bonus, so that'll be eight total. We have one activation here, two activations here, or one activation here, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's our eight activations. The white die represents uh, units that'll be using amphibious assault. There you go, one here, a couple there. Now we did have to use a bunch of points for these big armies that are being moved by amphibious assault. So that took a bunch of points, or the Japanese amphibious shipping points used is up to five. They only got two more amphibious shipping uh, points left this turn. Uh, all their activations have been used, and uh, we are up to date. Now, the thing of it is, with that amphibious assault, we can actually do that, move that down here, because there are no uh, allied air units anymore to prevent it with their uh, zones of influence. So that last turn with the Japanese wiping out the, uh, or wanting to establish air superiority and definitely doing it, definitely is uh, enabling these amphibious assaults. So that is it. We will move to the units next. Just giving you an idea what's going on. We got a, a bunch of cruisers we're gonna pull, push in there because of the bonus on the card and uh, a bunch of infantry. So we're gonna move us a bunch of ground units now on into uh, Balea. And uh, Balea might be close to capitul capitulation. Erasmus choosing Singapore over Manila because Manila has been stacked. We thought we had this pretty well stacked up too, but you know, that's stacked up for the amount of forces that are going in there. We'll be back. The Erasmus bot gave us something to think about it when you keep on going down through this line here. It says, uh... Move activated units to target. We did, and we go to K. It says, can enemy naval or ground units react to this target? They can. And the only ones that really can are the naval units there in uh, Manila. They can kind of throw a cog into our little dealy here. So therefore, K would be yes. Uh, can, they can react, and then it has L. If that's a yes also, is this an event card offensive yes we got two yeses underneath here and it says here consider performing a smothering attack what that smothering attack means is a little bit of a soak off attack instead of having one battle hex here at Singapore um, you'd have another unit naval units one of these activated units going to Manila to pin these guys down in a pretty much a low odds attack 
but uh, putting them down so they can't come over here and react. So that's kind of cool by the bot. And I think I will do that with this unit here. It's a cruiser. She'll get two uh, points acted, uh, uh, added to her attack strength. And we'll just we'll go against these. These two units here in Manila are uh, damaged and step lost anyway. So we will have us two battle hexes this round. That's killer for the Erasmus bot. All right, I think I'm going to call this a video. When we come back, we will uh, carry on with the attack. Have it more fun than it's humanly possible. Or more fun than a human being should be allowed to have. <laughs> Empire of the Sun will be back.